we uh, have hundreds of thousands of customers across 190 countries. And one of the stories that I just love to tell is um, Bristol Myers Squibb. So this is not a, a small company. Not a small company, well known, large enterprise, a large pharmaceutical company. They are using the availability of utility computing. So compute resources that they can pull down as and when they need to to run more efficient, higher resolution clinical trials. And what that means immediately is fewer children involved in pediatric clinical trials with fewer clinical interventions so in they, those trials. So they turn to the, the mountains of servers and, that's right. and data processing power that's sort of sitting there mm -hmm. somewhere, actually in multiple locations, mm -hmm. and say we can do stuff online that we only have occasional need for at scale that we never could before instead of testing drugs on children. That's right. So they have their, the capability to remove the constraints of their computation. They can remove the walls of their data center and add just a ton more capacity. And that means they can run higher quality simulations and fewer children get involved in clinical trials. Um, and yet it's also the place where so many of the startups that, mm -hmm. that roll through this chair you're sitting in right now, <laughs> I mean, the, you know, Pinterest, Reddit, Foursquare, yep. all those companies building their businesses, which they don't know how big they're gonna be. Absolutely. And they can't spend the money to build it and see if someone are gonna come using Amazon Web Services. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So with Amazon Web Services, they can draw down as much or as little compute and storage and databases as they need. And they can do that without any upfront capital expenditure. So if you're a startup, you want to operate as leanly as possible. You don't want to have to outlay a huge amount of money initially just to go out and buy some servers and then operate those servers. I find the number of services that you guys offer bewildering. Mm -hmm. That's because I, although I, I, I love technology, I cover <laughs> technology, I'm not in fact a technologist. I'm not actually making stuff. Uh, but it seems to me that the introduction of databases in particular is a really big change for AWS. Yeah, absolutely. So we offer uh, 33 different services across compute and storage and databases and ancillary services to help deploy and manage and all these sort of things. Um, we're continually striving to produce services which help our customers work productively with their data at pretty much any scale. So uh, back in November, we announced the release of uh, Amazon Redshift. This is a petabyte scale data warehousing service, uh, which is fully managed and designed for very, very high performance. And for the first time, a data warehouse, which has the ability to integrate data across a number of sources and provide real actionable insight, is available to companies of all sizes. In other words, the kind of database that would require multi-year lengthy exactly. Oracle-like installations that would cost tens of millions of dollars but do smaller businesses or new businesses really need that kind of data? And if they've got that much data, can they move it over into a non-SQL database such as this? Yeah, absolutely. So the fact is that large-scale data warehousing uh, hasn't been available to smaller or mid-sized startup companies because they just haven't had the capital to go out and spend on these sort of services. So with Redshift, we're making it available at less than $1,000 per terabyte per year. So this is really the first time that the advantages of data integration and data warehousing and business intelligence has been available to anybody.